Thank you, gentlemen, and a very exciting game there. Crumbs coming to you first. We were a little concerned with that LeBlanc lock-in, but it worked out 10-0-5 there for Forbidden. I love that game. They banned the Maokai because Maokai gives LeBlanc a lot of troubles. As soon as she distortions, and the W can follow her when she distorts back. So it was a little bit obvious that they were going to go for the LeBlanc again. SKT, they have a godly LeBlanc player. They don't prioritize it at all and pay deeply for it. Ari, really underwhelming. And I really love the development of how this game went regarding the pressure. Nobody goes in the mid lane for this, this match at all. It's just 1v1, straight up. In the first half, Fnatic recognizes, okay, steal back. You know, he's having a bit of a rough time. Let's help him out a lot. They get him going, and then Sivir with a poor itemization is pretty much useless during the entire laning phase. And then from then on, the focus switches onto the top side of the map. Okay, Huni's making all of plays bottom. Let's focus him top so that we don't get countered by him bottom. And they pile drive him, but he makes the out plays. And then eventually we see him lose a lot of 1v1s. It's really interesting watching how these two top laners fight themselves 1v1 to the death, but use zero summoners and zero ultimates because they know how useful it's gonna be in the team fights later on, and that's exactly what happened. Spawn, the bot lane for you was a big thing for this matchup. Yeah, I was just so confused. The Avarice Blade in there just meant that Sivir couldn't do the only thing left in her arsenal to win that lane, and that's repetitively shove. As soon as you give up the double longswords, which is what Avarice Blade costs, you can't just throw boomerang after boomerang down the wave, shove it out, get back to base. As soon as they did that, they had committed to at least a 40-minute game when Urgot was going to fall off AD-wise, and it just never got there. Even though I don't agree with Steelback's itemization in that game. He was a very key factor in them winning. His flash ultimates, whilst he's positioning around teamfight still is a little bit off. He was pretty on point with the rest of his decision making. So yeah. very big props to this guy turning it around. Well, I think that was a sensational game from Fnatic. I was watching that and see this is how Fnatic wins. This is how Fnatic gets ahead. Huni with an exceptional performance. One versus two top lane. Killing Fake are perfect equalizers, textbook. If anybody wants to learn Rumble, <laughs> here's your Rumble player. Insane gameplay. And I think also how they snowballed it into the mid game was exceptional. You see them here. Yeah, you see them here on your screen now. Fnatic, after tying the series, what will they come back with next game? I want to continue on the point of Huni, though, and pull up our replay, Sheepy. Have you, you know, uh, walk us through it? Because this was after Huni saving his flash, saving his ultimate, being soloed out in the top lane, knowing they wanted to fight. Yeah, this is Fnatic 101. And if we roll out the replay here, um, they are starting the engage because they know Nars at the top side trying to get the engage and, well, they don't get it at the start. Trying to pull back. Huni still dead, still dead. Bang starting the engage and they know right now we're just waiting for the TP to come. It's slowly starting and Fnatic does the I mean, the he's trap. still dead for another 10 yeah, seconds. And, the, and they start to pile up on this and we saw exactly the same position with EDG against Fnatic before. Perfect. And they pile up on it and two, Huni comes with the TP from the top side on them and my god, what a beautiful turn as well from Yellowstar and Rainover. I think Yellowstar, not mentioned much, had a fantastic game on any here, and maybe that's a band that's coming out as well. I but there's just so much to bear. That steal back flash on the charm saved that game single handedly. You know, we give this guy quite a bit of a tough time during the laning phase, but right here in the team fight, Jeez. wow, that flash, if he died instantly, whole different game. Yeah, yeah, and another thing is, we talk about how Huni carries his team, but you have to let your top laner do his job, so they hold all the ultimates. The disengage wasn't a Garius Barrel, wasn't a Tibbers, they just continue to kite back. Such patience play, and if there's one thing to point out in this game, it's how to play Patience League of Legends, because you do it like Fnatic, pick your fights, you do not do it like SKT, which is where you let a team fluster. Yeah, this is where I want to turn to SKT, because they had a composition that was built to wave clear and pick. They should have 100% been able to get to that late game that you were talking about against a team that had relatively poor siege. Yeah, and this is the thing. As soon as you pick Urgot and you don't pick a way to get into turrets, unless you can outright dive, you cannot siege those turrets. I actually said at one point, as the second Baron was coming up, if they just didn't leave their base for three minutes and then came out with one decisive push to get wards into the Baron area, I think they could have stored it for a little bit longer. What do they do? Exactly they the pulled team the trigger. Fight. Yeah, that was exactly the team fight we were watching. Fnatic realizing that, baiting them into that. SKT overcommitting because they feel forced and Fnatic just slaughtering from there on out. And I think also somebody we need to point out is the rookie mid laner Fabivin. He's really coming from 
the Challenger series right into the LCS, right into MSI and performing incredible with a 10.05 score in the end. Want to look ahead to the next game. Faker will be remaining in the lineup for SKT. Now, what do they do as they switch sides back to what they were in game one? This Urgot now, something that may be a priority between the teams, the Rumble. I mean, a lot might change here in picks bands. I think for this match, SKT has to realize that LeBlanc is a huge factor for these games. Rek'Sai is not having as much impact as we expected from Bengi. He performed better on Rek'Sai in the group stages. Put him on the Gragas again, but you need to enable Faker. Ari is just not cutting it, and Fabivin on LeBlanc has been unstoppable. The previous game, I think the composition that SKT had drafted made it a little bit harder for him to actually get going on the LeBlanc. But on this one, a sit-back weight game, farm it out, and then eventually you saw like pretty much one-shotting somebody. We were wondering, how did he buy a DFG? We're on 5.7. <laughs> yeah, and enable your AD carry. Do not put him in a losing matchup again. We've continually talked about this bot lane being the biggest discrepancy. Throw bang a line. There's more than one person on your team. It's not a mid-game focused team anymore. Give this guy a winning matchup and let him go to work. Well, gentlemen, we have ourselves a series. If you're looking to join fellow League of Legends fans and watch the mid-season Invitational Finals tomorrow, we've got you covered. Coca-Cola is teaming up with Cinemark Theaters to host viewing parties from coast to coast. Not only will attendees be able to catch that best of five series on the big screen, but they will also take home a collectible Heimerdinger Cup. The finals will play at 15 different locations on May 10th. And for more information, you can check out lolliesports.com slash VP. Now, don't go anywhere because after this quick break, it's on to game three between SKT and Fnatic. Stay with us. Okay, we have a strong team fighting composition. We have burst, we can catch, we have everything we need. Okay, so through communication, and it's rewarding. It's Korean on Korean battle, and it's Huni that wins! Huni takes down Faker in a 2v1, and Fabivin runs four! That's a double kill! Flame Spit is on, and a three man stun! Yellow Star holds SKT under the tower, steal back 3 1 and 1. Go, Rory, go, Rory! Rory, 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 Rory! Rory, 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 Rek'Sai? 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 Nice, nice. nice. Bengi's low, Faker's low, Bang's low, but it's Wolf that's down. Mahuni has spawned and he's dropped the equalizer on the back line to drop Faker. Can, I can, I can, I can, I can. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Chase, 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 chase. Nice! Nice! They are challenging the number one team from Korea and it's 1-1 for Matic.